this message about authority and about uh, the influence that we can have uh, in 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 the world and in our communities and in our families. Uh, Lord, we desire to hear your word tonight. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Supernatural Authority and Influence. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to contrast the two concepts of authority and influence because they are very similar, but there are some significant differences in them. Now, authority is the delegated right to make decisions and fulfill an assignment. So it's a right. You've got a right to do these things. Uh, on the other hand, influence is the ability to affect change, mm -hmm. such as changing character or uh, behavior of people. And so these are very important concepts. And, and we need to know how to operate, let's say, in our family or mm -hmm. in our on our job uh, and where do we get uh, these things authority and influence and so that's that's what we're going to be talking about tonight and if we follow the holy spirit and uh, then we're being changed from glory to glory mm -hmm. and transformed into the image of jesus christ and, and we're going to have more authority and influence both so authority is the right to make decisions and fulfill an assignment. But uh, hallelujah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so I am so excited about this that uh, we need to know if we have influence or not. And, and influence is an ability. It's an ability to affect change. And so I want you to consider a high school in your area. Now, all of those teachers in that high school, uh, they have education. Mm -hmm. uh, and credentials. To, to qualify them and credentials to qualify them to be a teacher. And the authority of the school, uh, the administration has hired all of them uh, to be teachers and given them the authority to teach uh, so that the students will learn. So they all have authority. They've got the background for it. They've got the education. They've got the credentials for it. But if you go into the classrooms in that high school, you'll find that there's a lot of learning going on in some classes, but not so much learning in other classes. And, and so mm -hmm. it's not a difference in their authority. All of the teachers have authority. Right. So what What's the difference? It's their influence. Uh, some of them have influence. And uh, you walk into uh, some teacher's uh, class and uh, the, the students know they're supposed to, this is a place to get serious, uh, that they're going to have to learn what the teacher wants. But in other places, it's a, it's a different kind of environment. And, and uh, whether they learn or not, it's not that important. Uh, in those classrooms. I think about a an administrator and teacher that Sherry worked with years ago. Mm -hmm. And when the bell rang, she locked her door. Yeah, she, yeah. She locked it. And if the students weren't there, she they were out. Yeah, there. they didn't go to class that day. They didn't get in. And so there, there's just a difference uh, in uh, not only the way uh, teachers teach, but also in the influence they have. And so this is very important. And I want you to just see that difference between authority, delegated right to do something, and the ability to affect change. And so the reason for us to cover this tonight is you need influence in your family. You need to be able to influence your children in their behavior and in their character and in their conduct. You need to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do it and how to impact uh, your marriage and your extended family and in on your job how you can increase uh, the amount of authority and influence you have in the job in the workplace or in your community it's all the same and so we're going to be looking at these basic principles and they're so important for all of us uh, god wants you to have influence uh, with a lot of people yeah, with your family, with your job, 
within your community. Okay, Sherry. I just want to follow up with uh, what Brother Fred was uh, saying about the woman that I worked with uh, at a um, at the technical uh, institution. Uh, we were um, our department was uh, the business uh, department, and we were training up uh, secretaries and administrative assistants and receptionists and. And, and so this woman that Brother Fred uh, was talking about, uh, she wanted to make a, um, a, a strategic point uh, that workers needed to be on time and that uh, when they go into a job situation that they needed to be on time. Uh, if they started at eight o'clock, they needed to be there at eight o'clock. If they started at 10 o'clock, then they we were there at 10 o'clock. But she wanted to make that point and influence the behavior of those students. And she did, uh, because you only had to get locked out one time. And you realized, hey, maybe I need to be five minutes early. You know, I need to get there on time and do what I'm supposed to be doing. So it did, it did influence their behavior. That's what I wanted to share okay so if you go to uh, corporate america you'll find uh, people that are doing good on their job and doing their job well and the, and they begin to get promoted and, and and to higher positions with more authority and uh, but what happens in some cases is that they get promoted to the point where they're no longer effective and so what, what does that mean? Well, they still have authority. They may be way up in the uh, structure <laughs> of the organization, but they've gone beyond their place where they have ability. And so the company gives them authority, but they don't have the influence to make the changes uh, that need to be changed to be that need to be made. So they're really two different concepts. Some people have authority, but not influence. Some people have an influence, but not authority. And I want to show you how you can have more influence in your life, more influence in your family, and more influence uh, on the job and in uh, in your city and community. <clears throat> hey, George. <clears throat> so influence is, uh, is very important. <clears throat> and so that's what I'm really going to be focusing on tonight. But just as a way of remembrance uh, about authority, uh, they're basically the authority that we have, and I'm talking about supernatural authority and supernatural uh, supernatural influence. So the authority we have comes from the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And there are basically four points I want to make with respect to authority before I go on into influence. And with authority, uh, what I want you to know is that you need to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's about relationship because Jesus Christ has all authority. Matthew 28 said, "He had, I have all authority in heaven and earth. So if you want to have authority, you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And in Luke 10, 19, he says he gives us authority uh, to overcome uh, the obstacles of, that the enemy bring against us. Amen. Uh, secondly, we need to be under authority ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Jesus uh, uh, went to the centurion one time and the centurion said, I've got a, a sick servant and I want you to uh, come, I want you to heal him. And Jesus said, well, I'll come. That's why Jesus is. He's willing to come to your house and heal the people that are sick. Amen. And, but uh, the centurion said, well, I, you don't have to come. Just send the word. I understand how authority works. I'm under authority. And I have people uh, that are under me and I give them a command and they do it. So we, first, we have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondly, we have to be under authority uh, ourselves. And thirdly, we need to embrace what God tells us to do, embrace our assignments, because mm. the authority that we have comes from the assignments. So if, we, if we're not um, embracing the assignments that God has for us, then he, there's no reason to give you uh, authority. So it's by having uh, understanding of what you're supposed to do. And then you get authority. 
And finally, you have to activate authority. So a lot of people mm -hmm. have authority. Mm -hmm. All of us have authority, but you have to activate it. It reminds me of a man I knew uh, that was sharing I knew of. Uh, his name was Reuben, and uh, God sent him. He was in Africa, and God sent him to another nation where they were in war, where there were warring tribes and, and uh, to share the gospel. And so he went there to the border to go into that nation, and some men ran out and and beat him up and, and uh, left him for dead. He, he finally got back home mm. and uh, and and got healed and, and uh, the Lord sent him back. Uh, but this time he was going to activate the authority. See, he had authority. God had sent him uh, to this nation. Uh, and, and so he had authority, but he had to activate it. And so he went back to the same place. The same men ran out uh, to beat him up again. And this time he said, in the name of Jesus, I have come here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to the people in this nation. And so they stopped and they let him go in and he preached the gospel. You see, you have to activate the authority. It's one thing to know you have the authority, but you have to activate Amen. it. Okay, so that, that was in a way of uh, just a review of some things about authority. But tonight we're really talking about uh, about influence, and it comes from how people perceive you, mm, whether or not mm, they perceive mm. that you have influence or not. See, with the woman we're talking about with Sherry that she worked with, that teacher, mm -hmm. the people perceived uh, that she was going to lock them out if they were not on time. And that's right. Uh, and so it's how do people perceive you, and I'm going to show you how you can increase uh, their perception of you. Now, there's a, this verse in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 52. It's about Jesus. And this is about the only thing that's written about him during this long period of time. And uh, some commentary said it's about 18 years. And there really wasn't much said about him during that time. But it made this uh, statement that he grew in wisdom, glory to God, and, and stature and in favor with God and man. Mm -hmm. So there are four mm -hmm. things that happened in that time period. It's almost an 18 year period and there wasn't much said about him, but it said that he grew in these areas. So he grew mm -hmm. mentally, he grew physically, and he grew spiritually and socially. So he grew in all the important areas. All of those are important to us. But the point I want to focus on is favor because it's how people perceive you and how God perceives you. And uh, uh, the general, uh, Joshua, see, he was a general uh, over the uh, nation of Israel, over their army. And uh, we might say, well, this is one of the greatest generals of all time. I mean, he won great battles uh, over uh, all kinds of odds against him, stacked against him, but he still won. Well, Exodus 17 talks about that he was in an arm, in a battle and that he was winning as long as uh, Moses held up his hand. Mm -hmm. and, but when that Moses' hand got weary, uh, then they would fall down and Joshua's army would uh, be defeated. And so uh, Moses had a couple of men that set him on a rock and they held his hands up. And so uh, Joshua, Joshua, won the battle. Hallelujah. So the nation. Okay, so who, who was actually behind all that? It was God. God. Amen. God was really moving through Joshua and the army to defeat uh, the Amalekites. Okay, so now let's fast forward uh, to uh, Joshua and uh, the book of Joshua. And now Moses is dead. Mm. And, and God speaks to Joshua and said, as I was with Moses, Moses. I will be with you, and I'm going to change how people perceive you. And this Ooh, is, this is in, uh, Joshua 3, 7. He said, I'm going to change the perception of how people see you because, see, they were looking to Moses for all of 40 years. They were following Moses, and they knew that Moses was a very powerful man. They saw all kinds of miracles, mm -hmm. even deliverance out of Egypt, and then the Red Sea parting, and, 
And so nobody doubted that Moses was a powerful man. But now uh, the army has been turned over to Joshua. Is Joshua a powerful man? And they didn't really know. And, and I'm sure many of them would question, well, maybe I should have been the a one in charge, maybe. And, and <laughs> so the same thing may happen to you one day. You, you may get promoted and then uh, people will say, well, why did you? Why did this person get promoted? Why didn't I get promoted? And so it causes some frustration. And so when there's a transition like this, we need to increase our influence. Now, when, when somebody hires you to mm -hmm. and promotes you, they're going to give you authority. But what about the influence? And so God told Joshua in 3, 7, I'm going to change the way the people mm -hmm. perceive yeah. you. the way they see you. And then in uh, a four, uh, the fourth chapter, it says how it happened. Okay, so if you can imagine, Joshua is going to go into the promised land and, and he's going to, they're going to have to cross over a body of water called the Jordan River. And I'm sure as they were getting up to the Jordan River, they were thinking, Oh, I hope it's a small amount of water we have to cross mm -hmm, over because mm -hmm. uh, we don't swim. We, we never learned to swim in the, uh, when we were coming through the wilderness. There's no reason to swim in the wilderness. <laughs> right. and, and so the, I bet they were thinking, oh, boy, I just hope it's a, a small amount of water. And then when they get there, what's happening? The Jordan the is flooded. flooded. <laughs> Water's over the banks. Oh, mm. now this is the day. This is the day that God is going to change people's perception, how they see Joshua. And so what, what he does, he gives him a strategy. He mm -hmm. said, send out the priests with the Ark of the Covenant first. And so the, the, the priests went out and when they, uh, there was all this flood. And when they stepped into the water, the water parted. Ooh, and, glory. And, and it stopped way up there, okay? So the priest went out into the uh, riverbed and they stood there with the Ark of the Covenant and then the whole army passed through uh, the Jordan and on dry land. Oh, and, and then God spoke to Joshua and said, go tell the priest to come up with the Ark of the Covenant. So they came up out of, out of the dry Jordan River and when they got up on high ground, the flood came back. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so what do we see here? And God says in uh, Joshua 4, uh, uh, verse 14, that I have changed the way people look at you now. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have changed their perception of you. I have changed your influence. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I have changed your influence. Now, let's look back. How did he change his influence? Well, because Joshua operated with authority, he overcame a problem, a very significant problem, how to get an army over a flooded river. And the power of the Holy Spirit was involved. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. So your influence, if you can bring uh, the power of the Holy Spirit and overcome an obstacle, people are going to look at you differently. And they're going to see that you have influence. And, and people are looking for people with influence. And I believe that uh, everyone mm -hmm. listening to me tonight, that you have influence Amen. Uh, because you have favor with God and man. And how do we get favor with God and man? By uh, receiving his wisdom, receiving his teaching, and obeying what he tells us to do then mm -hmm. we have favor. A and then the, it says favor with God and people. So when people view you favorably uh, about the decisions you make and about the authority that you carry, that is influence. It's how people perceive you. See, if they uh, perceive that you don't have any authority and you don't have any knowledge and you don't have any wisdom how do they perceive you well they're not going to uh, think much of you and they're, they're not going to listen to they're you. not going to listen to and they're not going to do what you tell them to do but if you have influence and, and and you get that influence by being close to the lord 
following the Holy Spirit, receiving his wisdom. When you receive wisdom, glory to God, and you obey him, then he gives you favor with people. You also have favor with God, but we're talking about favor with people so that they will do what you tell them to do. You know, there are a lot of restaurants in this day and time uh, that uh, they hire a bunch of workers, uh, but the manager has authority to hire and fire workers, but they can't get them to come to work on time. We were, Sherry and I went to a restaurant the other day and the hostess uh, met us at the, at the front of the restaurant and said, uh, oh, we don't have a, wait, a server. They're supposed to be here, but they're not here. See, that manager had authority from the restaurant owners uh, to hire and to manage it but he didn't have influence to get the workers there on time. That's right. And, and it's the same uh, for all of us. We have to have influence. Not only will people give us authority in your business, I'm sure, or wherever you work, I'm sure that you have authority, but we're talking about today, not only authority, but also influence. It's how people perceive us and we want them not to just to like us as a friend uh, if we're over them, but we want them to do uh, what we tell them to do. Now, see, there was a time when I was a researcher and a teacher at the university, and the Lord told me to be uh, an administrator, and I didn't even want it. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I hadn't uh, considered it. I hadn't even uh, trained for it, but he told me, and so that's I knew I had favor with him because he wanted me. Now, the thing about once once you get promoted <laughs> and, and once uh, you're moving up in an organization and, and then people are going to be jealous and, and they're going to think, well, why did this person get promoted and I didn't get promoted? So all of a sudden enemies crop up and, mm -hmm. and they're going to come against people who are rising stars. And so you need to have not only the authority of the organization behind you, but you also need to have influence, uh, not only personal influence, but we're talking about supernatural influence mm -hmm. today. And the way you get it is by having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, receiving his wisdom, and he gives you authority. And when you uh, obey what he's telling you to do, then uh, you're going to have influence over people too with, with people. And influence means that you can affect change. You can change how they behave. You, you can affect how they behave. You can affect their conduct. You can affect their character mm -hmm. because you have influence. And so you need influence with your children. You yes. need influence uh, on the job. Mm -hmm. You need influence in your in, community. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, you need influence. So uh, authority is out there and available for a lot of people, but a lot of people don't activate it like we, like I mentioned earlier. But we need not only authority, we also need the influence that goes along with that. Mm. And, and see, Joshua is the perfect example because people were jealous of Joshua being the leader of the this our great army, uh, the people that had been there with him for a long time, and they were jealous of him. But we have to know that God is with us, and, and that we can have influence over them, and and then their whole attitude's going to change. Mm -hmm. See, when Joshua took them across that flooded Jordan River, and they walked over on dry land, their perception of him changed. God said, I have changed their perception from this day forth. They're not going to see you the same way. They're going to see that you are the one that I have chosen. And that's what we mm -hmm. want in our lives. We want our children to perceive mm -hmm. that you are the person in their life that God has put in their life to bring forth the character and the destiny that God has for them. Now, one of the things we know from Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 17 through 19, is that we have to know what our calling is, 
what our inheritance is, and what power we operate in. Mm. We have to be settled in our hearts. See, one time there were some people building a wall to restore mm -hmm. the walls of Jerusalem. And I'm talking about the book of Nehemiah, chapter four. And, and uh, people uh, came up to the people building the wall and uh, they were Sanballat and Tobiah. Uh, Tobiah and and uh, they, they insulted them and they mm -hmm. discouraged them. And they wanted to come off the wall. Yeah, they mocked them, ridiculed them. But they wouldn't come off the wall. See, when you know what God has called you to do, and you know your calling and your inheritance and the power of God operating in your life, you won't stop building and you won't stop progressing and you mm -hmm. won't start, mm -hmm. stop bringing forth the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what they did there when they were building the wall. Even though enemies multiplied, uh, they wouldn't stop building the wall. And then one day they had the wall built and they had the gates uh, raised up on the wall. And, and that's what you need to do in your life. You, when God promotes you and increases you, we can all say and uh, shout and say, oh, it's wonderful. God is increasing us. God is increasing us. We, we're uh, being increased. But uh, also that means that you've got more responsibility. And that's you've right. Got Right. Uh, more people that hate you and you've got the devil that hates Amen. You. you you've got a tax against you and so if god wants to increase you but but the world wants to pull you down they want to insult you and and, and come against you and, and so persecute you've got, you and persecute you so they've got you've got to have not only the authority of jesus christ operating in your life but you also have to have influence a supernatural influence Amen. And, and it comes from uh, glory to God, just staying close to the Lord Jesus Christ, being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ, receiving his wisdom and, and obeying the commandments of the Lord. And, and then you have favor with God and with people. Yes. And they will perceive you in a favorable light. Oh, hallelujah. Now, that, that doesn't mean there won't be any battles, yeah. but there may be other battles. See what, what happened with Joshua that day they crossed the river. Uh, all of a sudden, once they crossed the river, uh, his authority had increased. His influence with the people had increased, but his enemies also multiplied. He had all of these. Yeah, see, on, yeah. the, on the other side of the Jordan, he didn't have all those enemies, but now he's crossed over. He's going to take over all of those lands uh, because uh, God, hallelujah, God was wanting to expel those people. If you go back, it says that, that uh, God said, I'm going to do away with these people because their sin hasn't yet uh, come to uh, the fullness of it. But when it comes to the fullness, that's when I'm going to destroy uh, these enemies. And so they were the enemies of God and they were the enemies of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and so in the a fifth chapter of Joshua, uh, Joshua's out there by himself and a man comes up to him and he has a sword. And, and, and really this is the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, uh, the commander of the Lord's army. And uh, Joshua said, are you for us or are you for them? And, and he said, I'm not, I'm not for either one of you. I've got my own assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm the commander of, the, of God's army. So I'm the commander. Of the, so here's the point. We need to get with God and, and have a understand what his perspective was. Mm -hmm. it, at that time, God was going to expel all of those nations before Israel, not because Israel uh, was such a great nation and, and uh, doing all of these wonderful things. It was because the sin of those nations had come up to God and that, that was the fullness and that was the end uh, of the sin. And so he was going to expel them. So God had his own plan. And we need to embrace God's plan and God's assignment. See, when we embrace God's assignment and we're obedient to that, our uh, authority increases and our influence increases. Mm -hmm. So to in, I, see, this is the way I started the message tonight. I'm going to show you how to increase uh, mm -hmm. your uh, influence. The way you increase your influence is to embrace God's plans, oh, uh, to embrace hallelujah. his word and his spirit 
and, and do what he wants uh, done. Look at things from his perspective. Yes, yes. You know, uh, Sherry and I have had several people come to us and say, we want God to bless our plan. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think about one man in particular, and uh, he wanted uh, to buy a, a business, a, a, an empty store way out in what I would call just a, a, a rural area. Yeah, in the, was, out in the country. And, and there was, it wasn't a city. I mean, it was just out uh, at a really a strange place. Uh, there was nothing else around it. And he wanted to buy that building and he wanted to start a business so that he could retire. And he wanted God to bless it. And this was his plan. This wasn't God's plan. This was his plan. Well, now to help him, uh, he had a, 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 an additional plan beyond that. And that he was going to hire a Christian uh, financial advisor. And so the, he hired the financial advisor, gave him some money uh, to put his stamp of approval on uh, the business. And what the man wanted was a supplemental income when he retired. And so he, he had a full-time job. And when he ended the full-time job, every day he'd come and uh, he would cook in, the, in his store, in his uh, restaurant that he opened up and uh, do some things. And so, uh, you, you know, it was his plan. It wasn't God's plan. And after a few months of that, just which was constantly working and never resting and working uh, seven days a week, mm -hmm. uh, he eventually had a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. but, you know, he wanted he wanted God to bless his plan. And, mm -hmm. and not only did he have a mental breakdown, he also had uh, lost his business and uh, he was mm -hmm. unable to make his payments and the and the bank foreclosed on his property. But I mean, he he had good intentions. Uh, he had a plan, a business plan, and he hired a Christian a financial uh, advisor and counselor uh, to make sure that it would be sound and that uh, the man would make sure that God blessed it. But I tell you, God never blessed it. God mm. wasn't in the plan. We've got a we have to know God's plan. We have to know God's plan, just like Joshua. Joshua said, are you for us? Or are you for them? He was expecting this, uh, uh, what looked like an angel to him, uh, and he had a drawn sword. Uh, he, he was expecting him to say, I'm either for you or I'm for them. But really, he said, I'm for neither. I, I've got my own plan. I've got, I'm the commander of God's army. And we're going to do what God wants. And this is not about you. This is about fulfilling God's plan. It's the same thing for you and me. We need to find out what God's plan is. Uh, the man I told you about the business that had a mental breakdown and, and uh, a foreclosure on his whole uh, business, uh, none of that was of God. And uh, you can uh, ask and pray that God will bless your thing, but I tell you, it's not going to happen. The best thing is to find out what God wants. Look at God's perspective and get in line with him, and that's exactly what Joshua did, and, and that mm -hmm. caused the people to believe uh, about the favor of, that was on Joshua. Yeah, that's what they be, saw. Because mm -hmm. they had great victories after great victories. There was one time that God didn't tell them to go down and conquer this little nation, this little uh, place, but they tried and, and they were disobedient to what God said and they actually lost, but eventually uh, God turned everything around. So they had great victories across Israel because, uh, across that promised land, because they found out God's perspective and followed that. And the people saw the favor of God was upon mm, Joshua, Joshua and they followed him and Joshua followed the Lord. And that's what we all need to know. We need to know what God's plan is, what God's perspective mm. is and follow him. So uh, I believe this is an important concept today that we've right, talked right. about. It's not just authority. We also need God's influence uh, in and operating in our life, we get that by 
being obedient to what he's telling us to do. So let's find out his perspective and do what he uh, wants done, and then his favor will be on us, and people will have favor for us, and they will see us in a different light, and they will know mm -hmm. that you have authority with God, and you have influence to affect change in people's lives. Thank you for being here today, and I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful message, and I, I know I've received it, you know, into my heart. Uh, I want more influence, and I want uh, more influence with the Lord. Uh, I know the authority he has given me through Jesus Christ and, and through his word, uh, but that I want uh, that favor uh, for others to see the favor in the uh, of the Lord. And I know that each one of you uh, want the same thing, uh, that especially in your in your Christian walk with the Lord, uh, that you want more favor in, in your in your um, associations, in your friendships, uh, in your family life. Um, you know, I, I know some some families that the parents have absolutely no influence over their children. And their children see their parents as being weak and having uh, no power, no authority. Um, and But all of that can be changed with just hearing what Brother Fred has brought to us tonight about, uh, you know, praying and seeking the Lord about what his plan is uh, for your job situation, your family, your your Christian walk with him, your uh, your purpose. If you will find out from the Lord what that is, uh, then and begin to be obedient to that, uh, then that favor and influence will come uh, from from the Spirit of the Lord. And so I speak that over all of us right now in the name of Jesus. Amen.